where I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. The moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you, then Sasha Pierce appears in my posture and, and the way I speak and everything is different. And I believe what you worship in your life doesn't have to be religion or a certain kind of God. I worship my fans is what I'm trying to say. We're gonna be here cheering for you. I already light up my candle on my little altar. Good. You work all your little magic. Since the 1993 Super Bowl halftime show featuring Michael Jackson, America's biggest stage has continued to bring out many of the biggest artists in the land. From the Rolling Stones to The Who to Justin Timberlake exposing Janet Jackson in what was deemed a faux wardrobe malfunction. The ever-increasing need to shock and awe has continued an insatiable need to bring attention to each artist in question. While there was plenty of controversy surrounding the aforementioned artist, 2012 with Madonna really knocked on the demonic door only to have it kicked in by the likes of Beyonce. Here with me today is the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries who exposed what was actually going on in that Super Bowl halftime performance in a video that was seen everywhere around the world. And he also brought to you the world-renowned expose, They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. Here with me today to expose these things is Pastor Joe Schimmel. All right, Chad, I'm excited about getting going with you. And uh, I think what we've got to expose will be quite eye-opening. So I'm excited about the material. I think a lot of people in our audience are going to be blown away. And, and some, of, some of the things that the people that in our audience have seen before, I'm sure, other things will be brand new. But when you put it together cohesively, it's, there's no denying, man, that there's a satanic movement afoot that is just brainwashing the masses. And I'm glad we're going to expose it. Amen. And, and I really do believe that one of the things that we, we hope to bring out in this documentary is specifically the synergy behind all of this, that there is a, a real spiritual realm. The fact is that the Bible says very clearly in Ephesians 2, verse 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, that the prince of the power of the air, that Satan works through the sons of disobedience. And we're going to show that and we want to prove that over and over again, not just through one performance or one idea or one ideology, but show you that there is a spirit and something evil afoot. And while most of our focus in this video is specifically going to be on the artists themselves and their halftime performances, we would be amiss if we did not mention the game's greatest player and some of the powers that are continuing to help his abilities. Any superstitions going into the game? Any special thing you carried into the game on Sunday that you had tucked away somewhere? Uh, I did. I always... Um, <laughs> You know, I've learned a lot from my wife over the years. And she's so about the power of intention, you know, and believing things that are really going to happen. And she always makes a little altar for me at the game because she, she just wills it so much. And uh, so she put together a little altar for me that I could bring with pictures of my kids. And I have these little special stones and healing stones and protection stones. And she has me wear a necklace and take these drops she makes. And I say all these mantras. And I stopped it, questioning her a long works. time ago. I did. I just shut up and listened. And at first I was like, this is kind of crazy. And then about four years ago, we were playing the Seahawks. And she said, you better listen to me. This is your year. But this is all the things you're going to have to do to win. And I did all those things. And by God, you know, it worked. It was pretty good. <laughs> and then in 2015, it was about early January. And she said, you know how much I love you. And I said, yeah. And she said, I just want to let you know this is not going to be your year. Oh. And of course we lost. I said, what does 16 look like? <laughs> and she said, 16 is going to be your year. <laughs> so it was early January this year. And I said, babe, I asking, like, do we have a chance? And she said, yeah, but you're going to have to do a lot of work and you're really going to have to listen to me. <laughs> so, man, I listen to her. And right so, after the game, she said, see, I did a lot of work. You do your work, I do mine. She said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. <laughs> you know, when you see that last line there, it's somewhat harrowing. I mean, in all honesty, but I think most people may not realize how serious I think some of this stuff is. Oh, yeah. He's, I mean, he's playing with it, but it's reality that he's involved and she's involved in witchcraft. There's no doubting that, you know. In fact, Snopes, uh, which is famous for twisting 
You know, I mean, they'll expose some things that are, hey, these are false narratives, false stories, but they'll also take a true story, something that's really happening, and they'll twist it. They'll take part of that story and show how part of that story is false, and then they'll say, okay, the whole story is there for false. They do that over and over again. So when this came out with Tom Brady talking about witchcraft, they said, oh, he was joking. Well, yeah, he's kind of nervous about talking about it. That's what's going on there. He's nervous because he realized how ridiculous it sounds, especially for those who don't believe in witchcraft. For those who have a Christian worldview, for those who understand spiritual reality and understand holy writ, what the scriptures say, uh, we know it's very real. I mean, I was involved in it before I became a Christian, and I saw those satanic powers at work in my life. And when I realized they were dark forces that began to torment me and pull my covers down and speak to me, and I cried out to the living God and got deliverance in Jesus Christ, my whole life changed. And then I began to see, wow, these powers are real. And as you had articulated earlier, Chad, in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, the, the Bible talks about Satan being the prince of power of the air that works through the children of disobedience. And it says through that, he guides the course of this world, uh, the world of cosmos, where we get cosmetics from, arrangement, you know. And he's the god of this world system. And of course, it shouldn't surprise us that Tom Brady, who's been to 10 Super Bowls and won seven of them, uh, is involved in witchcraft. And he won most of his Super Bowls, by the way, after meeting, uh, you know, his Giselle, wife, yeah. Giselle, you know. So it's interesting. In fact, we show him on the cell phone. She's talking about lighting her candles and he's saying, work your magic, you know. I mean, they're into it, you know. And he's encouraging it, but he's also practicing it. It's interesting. I looked at some of the statements on the internet, you know. Salem Historical Tours, they tweeted, uh, Tom Brady is back in the Super Bowl and it might just be witchcraft in addition to hard work, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, CBS Sports, after giving many of the quotes that he uh, gave that we just saw there, states, if any NFL quarterbacks are reading, you know the secret to Brady's success. You just need to find a good witch, quote, unquote, and marry her. I think it's interesting. Profootballnetwork.com, uh, they have an article entitled, Tom Brady's Dominance is Practically Witchcraft. So that was interesting. And Gasell uh, is depicted in this little uh, skit kind of narrative. Hello, dear, I made you a big steak. And she's pictured in a house dress and an apron. Uh, before starting my housework, did you have fun winning another Super Bowl? Brady is, you know, seen reading the newspaper. Yes, but it's the oddest thing. Uh, the Chiefs suffered so many setbacks, and I got so many calls. Heck, Mahomes almost got sick uh, at the, uh, the team barber a week before the game. All the strange coincidences and lucky breaks make me wonder if something or someone, like spirits, you know, is trying to make life easier for me. Well, obviously, uh, he says that she makes him a, she has this makeshift mobile altar that he takes. So it's not that she's just practicing witchcraft. He's encouraging her in it. She made him an altar. He says he uses these magic stones and, and you know, these oils and, and uh, he uses mantras. That's repetitious commands to demonic spirits, you guys. Okay. Yeah. Jesus said, don't pray repetitiously like the pagans pray, but pray our father who art in heaven. So he's not seeking our Father who is in heaven, giving glory to Jesus and praising him, which many quarterbacks have. He's actually seeking out these spiritual forces. He said, I did all these things, and by God, you know, it worked. So he's doing these things, you know, uh, and saying it works. So he actually thinks this magic that he's practicing when he brings this altar into the locker room, it begins to say these repetitious prayers to these spirits uh, that he's getting results. And uh, it's kind of hard to argue that he is. I mean, you have sorcerers like in Acts chapter 8, around verse 9, where you have Simon the sorcerer. says he astonished the people, you know, with his magic. You have Elamis in Acts chapter 13 in the New Testament. And it talks about how the people were amazed at his magic. And we know that the demonic world can interface with the physical world and uh, even cause feats of physical prowess and strength. And that's beyond human, superhuman, demonic. Uh, we see that with the demoniac at the tombs who they put in chains and he continually breaks the chains. It's no problem for him uh, to just break these chains. And that was, that was emphasized because he was possessed by legion, all kinds of demonic entities. So you have Tom Brady basically calling out to be used by these spirits to have yeah. success. And he's having great success. We, as Christians, we shouldn't really freak out. We should say, wow, you know what? This is somebody, I'm sorry, I can't root for Tom Brady, you know, because he's using demonic powers. You know, if you want to root for someone, ultimately, you should need to be a fan of Jesus. I mean, he created you, he made the universe. He deserves all the praise. He gave his life to save you. He's prepared a place in heaven for you versus a guy that throws a touch, uh, some touchdown passes. Mm. Uh, I think there's a huge difference, and we should be following Jesus, but we need to be aware of what's going on and be careful we don't get the wrong, behind the wrong people.
Yeah, I think one of the more important things uh, to, to bring out when it, when it comes to all this is that, you know, Satan isn't sitting behind watching all of this, seeing somebody with more Super Bowls, more accomplishments than anyone in the biggest sport in America. And then they say, and Satan goes, oh, I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah. You know, I wish I would have thought of influencing. Oh, well, actually, I could be involved in that. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no possible way. And, and don't think that witchcraft isn't growing. In fact, in 2018, I believe, there was a, a, an article on the Christian Post that talked about specifically that witchcraft literally outnumbers in terms of how many people in America adhere to witchcraft than Presbyterians, a major Protestant denomination. I mean, that's pretty radical when you think about it, but when you think of the most popular, what were they calling him over and over again after this latest Super Bowl win? The GOAT, the GOAT, the GOAT, which is an acronym for greatest of all time, but I think it could mean something else as well. Nonetheless, when it comes back, and now we get back to when it comes to these Super Bowl halftime performances, because we are talking about the performance that is watched more than any performance in the nation. Once again, we are not going to sit here and look at it and go, you know, all these eyes are watching. Everyone's eyes are tuned in to this halftime show that's now grown into this huge thing since the attestation of bringing in Michael Jackson in 1993. So if all these eyes are there, you wonder who's going to be performing for the world. And 2012, I really believe, is a banner year for Satan in the halftime show. I believe it was the starting point, and as we said in the intro and continue to say, it seemed like there was a knocking on the door of the satanic realm in Madonna's performance. And specifically, Joe, I want to ask you, what's something that, that kind of stuck out <laughs> concerning what you saw back in 2012? Yeah, we've done so many Super Bowls that we've covered from showing the occult, uh, the inundation of occult imagery and so forth. And the one we did, we, we ended up not doing on Madonna. I, got, I had a whole script pretty much ready to go. And we decided, you know what, it became passe. I was busy doing a lot of other things. We didn't do it. But it was just, I mean, a lot of it was in your face, so we didn't really have to expose it. So it was a whole lot of occult imagery uh, you know, in this ISIS type headdress, you know, uh, as like an Egyptian type occult goddess, you know, and you see just the occult Egyptian uh, imagery throughout the entire uh, presentation for the most part. And I mean, she's old, you know, she's, you know, creaking at times. She actually falls down at one point, you know, and you feel sorry for her, but you feel that, you know, then you're like, no, and she's deceiving so many people. Yeah. I mean, we've shown in our videos, in our video, they sold their souls for rock and roll, where she's leading huge, you know, tens of thousands of fans singing, I'm going to ring my bell and go to hell. And they're all singing it with her yeah. and screaming it. She's fully on talked about, you know, being uh, possessed by a demon before, lonely all the time, all those kinds of things uh, and so forth. But in the halftime show there, I thought it was interesting as well, because uh, I mean, the, you know, they, they have the, the aerial shot and you see this huge on the stage, just lit up the God Horus uh, and the God Horus uh, in the new age, in the new eon, in the, in, in the, in the occult, uh, is a symbol of the coming new eon. Uh, Aleister Crowley said, and Aleister Crowley is the most highly regarded Satan of this last century, last two centuries now, he said, with Mahak's head, I peck out the eyes of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross, and that the age of Horus was going to supplant the age of Christianity, and there would be this bloodbath and so forth, bringing in this new satanic age. So that Horus becomes the symbol uh, for many new agers, many occultists, many Satanists for the coming new age, and you see just Horus lit up across the stage and uh, so forth. And it's kind of interesting. Crowley strikes this pose with his magician's hat, you know, as he's ushering in this age of Horus, and, and he puts his hands up like this, you know, on his face, and it's this kind of creepy look. One of the things I was going to expose that I didn't end up exposing, which I just thought was quite interesting, was uh, you have the dancers in the cr you know, crowd below the stage, where these placards all turn and, you know, sometimes they'll make an image. And this one, you have, you have Madonna, you know, with her hands like this, which is not something people ordinarily do. And, you know, I'm wondering if she would have made it a little bit bigger, it would have been too obvious because then you see the magician's hat. And I don't know her intention there for sure because you don't need to because she's definitely pushing the whole Egyptian imagery thing. And the Bible warns that in the last days, because we must keep in mind the, what was going on with Pharaoh and the Egyptian magicians like Jannies and Jambres who were trying to counterfeit the, the, the uh, miracles of God and so forth. They were oppressing God's people and they were a picture of, the Pharaoh's a picture of Antichrist. 
The magicians are a picture of the false prophet in the book of Revelation, this oppression of God's people. I mean, you go to the book of Revelation, and you know, the parallelism between the Exodus and Revelation yeah. is mind-boggling. The boils, you know, the bold judgments, I mean, God giving them the wings of eagles to go into the wilderness, you know, and protecting his people as they flee and so forth. It's just, it's, it's so obvious. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, terrible or perilous or difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self. And it talks about how wicked the world will get. And it says uh, these, those who oppose the truth would be like Jannies and Jambres who, you know, snuck into people's homes. And it's like th that they were the magicians in Egypt. And here you have this whole wave of occultism and Western witchcraft along with Eastern witchcraft uh, and, and Egyptian witchcraft just inundating the world. And it also says in Revelation chapter 11, it talks about even the holy city will become like Sodom and Egypt. Egypt. And if there's anyone who's pushed the idea of, you know, sexual perversion, Sodom, and Egyptian occultism through their careers, it was Madonna, who was one of the, you know, who was a pop queen before the more recent pop amen. queen in Beyonce. Yeah, amen. And, you know, interestingly enough, before we even get into the clip that we're going to talk about this, because this video, this Good Fight Ministries video has been seen all over the world. And before we even play the clip... One of the things that happened, and we mentioned already, talking about if 2012 was the knocking on the door, 2013 with Beyonce was kicking the door in because it was openly satanic. And I think a lot of people were shocked specifically because Beyonce was somewhat seen at the time as kind of innocent, right? Yeah, yeah. But people also wondered why on earth would Beyonce marry someone who's been openly satanic, I believe, especially when you get into it, hopefully here, Jay-Z. Why would she marry Jay-Z if she's so innocent? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you look at Jay-Z, I mean, he, he's the guy who does a song called Lucifer, Son of the Morning, where he's praising Lucifer, praising Satan, giving him credit for sinning with a righteous cause. You know, the Bible says we don't Gnostic. do evil that good may <laughs> yeah. come. Yeah, it's totally wicked. And uh, Jay-Z wears shirts like, do what thou wilt. We show that and uh, do what thou wilt is, you know, Crowley's maxim, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, which was the, the main slogan of the new age, which in the 1960s during the hippie movement, when Crowley's book started getting republished and, and John Lennon and the Beatles were pushing him and Jim Morrison was pushing him and many other artists, uh, be, do what thou wilt became do your own thing. Or if it feels good, do it. And that's when the United States changed because of the hippie counterculture movement, which was bringing all the religions from East, East the East, Eastern mysticism, revival of Western witchcraft, which was everything Crowley called for for the coming new eon. So it's just quite interesting that you see Jay-Z years removed from John Lennon and Jim Morrison, but a bust with, along with the rest of them on the album 13 of Alessia Crowley, Sgt. Pepper's top left, one guy over from your left on Sgt. Pepper's and Larry's Club Band album. Uh, uh, far removed, but here he's walking around with a shirt, do what thou wilt. He knows what that's about. And they're involved in this satanic movement. So it's just quite interesting uh, uh, because, you know, she admits she's possessed by, gets possessed by a spirit, which helps her sing. So what you see going on with Brady in the football fields also happened in the music industry in, in, in I believe, a far greater level with so many musicians as we, musicians are often magicians, you know. And even the scriptures warn, they talk about the false prophets and how they would deceive people with their words and how they would use harps. It's kind of interesting. They would yeah. use music. And today, the false prophets are still using music. And Satan was a mag magician, or a musician, I should say. Uh, he was uh, over the God's sanctuaries. He's a, a cherub. The cherubs have the scriptures reveal in Isaiah, cha I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Uh, they have musical instruments. And it's been, his musical instruments are mentioned in Isaiah chapter 14, that when he's brought down to Sheol, or hell, his, or his, mus his musical instruments will be brought down with him. So uh, people need to be aware there's a spiritual reality. There's demonic entities in the spiritual world and they're guiding the course of this world by using the children of disobedience, by possessing them and energizing these people coming to worldwide fame because there, there's something in it for them, but it's temporary. And of course, they lose their souls. You know, one of the things that took place, and we're going to be playing a clip here in just a minute, but when you put out the video, Beyonce, Sasha, the Super Bowl, and Satan, that video was seen everywhere around the world, hundreds of millions of views, actually, uh, when we really get down to it. And I remember specifically, we had gone to Israel the, the summer after that performance. And we were sitting there, and you had been speaking at a conference and on uh, pro-life, on uh, you know, no, no baby murder, obviously. And we were outside, and a young man from Israel 
had seen. And you guys are going to see a small clip, but I encourage you to check out the whole thing because it is powerful. And this is how powerful it is. This was a young man who has come to a conference who had only just weeks prior clicked on a video on YouTube from, <laughs> called Beyonce, Sasha, the Super Bowl, and Satan. And the reason why he was at that conference is because after he saw that wickedness and recognize what you're going to see here by her own words. You don't have to just trust Joe and Chad. You can hear from her lips where she gets her power from. And when he saw that, he recognized he was getting involved with the demonic and he gave his life to Christ Praise all God. the way in Israel. That's what it's all about for us. Yeah. And that's right now what you're going to see is just a short clip. And I encourage you to check out the rest of the clip of Beyonce with her own words telling you just where she gets and before you get into that yeah. clip uh, real quick is it's funny because so many people it was kind of funny because they recognized my voice or something from that clip that, that you know and I was like or somebody come up to my wife and I have you guys seen this somebody I never met before <laughs> and start showing it to my wife you know and I'm like and she goes yeah that my husband did that or I think Tony said he was playing hockey and one of the hockey players was a uh, our producer over here came up to him and says have you guys seen this and starts he goes yeah that's put out by my pastor you know so we do know uh, I think there was like 500,000, 550,000 plus shares on just one Facebook, yeah. which multiplies into many views. So we were grateful because we prayed the Lord God, I think it's a pretty short clip to you, get this message out, let people see, because she was considered so innocent. And then people started, because we're showing, you know, the Baphomet ring with the, the goat head, you know, on it that she wears and so forth, association with, you know, Jay-Z. It's pretty, pretty obvious. But what, one of the most telling things is, as you're going to show right now, uh, she admits being, you know, in, inhabited by a spirit. Yeah, let's have her say it. Yep. Play the clip. And I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up. And it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. And I knew that was going to be my coming out night. Well, I, you know, Joe, just with that short clip, as you mentioned already, I mean, how do you get around the fact of, of what she's saying right there? You really can't. And if we would have allowed the, the clip to play, play longer, you know, she yeah. talks about how uh, she, sings, she can't sing that way until this spirit inhabits her. And she just goes on and on about giving credit to this entity, which she calls Sasha Fierce, you know. And she says that Sasha, and Sasha Fierce, uh, F-I-E-R-C-E, uh, Fierce, you know. You're talking about violence and anger. And she talks about how she goes through this transformation when this entity uses her. And she flips a coin and one coin has Sasha on it and the other her and the fans go crazy when Sasha comes up because they want her to be you know, taken over by, the, they probably don't even know for the most part, but uh, she becomes electrified and, and so forth. And fierce, when you read about what happens when people get possessed by demons in the New Testament, you see words like fierce being used mm. of their activity, which I think is interesting. interesting. And it's quite interesting when you look at her and what happens and, and she's a medium. And the Bible warns, as Christians, we are supposed to stay away from mediums. Amen. We're not supposed to seek out witches. And mediums are conduits for the demonic world. And of course, so much of the music is being inspired by demonic entities. And that's why Christostom, one of the early church fathers, uh, a little bit later than the earliest church fathers, but he had stated that you know, God has given us the book of Psalms or songs. By the way, it's the biggest book in the Bible, you know, 150 chapters, to keep us from the music of demons. And they knew that mm -hmm. back then. And as Christians right now, we can't, you can't just, you know, just open yourself up to any little force that comes about. We show, you know, her in our, some of our exposés uh, in her concerts with a bunch of gals following her, you know, and guys and what have you. And one of them has 666 emblazoned across mm -hmm. her. I mean, come on, man. It's like so obvious what they're doing. And of course, we show her with the Baphomet, the, the goat head, uh, demonic Crowley symbol, symbols for a lot of Satanists. We show her not only using that with a ring, but we show her using it in, in another context as well, uh, purposely. So uh, there's no escaping the reality that Beyonce has opened up herself to demonic forces. And of course, she's with Jay-Z, who's the most successful rapper of all time, who is Mr. Do What Thou Wilt, as he wears his emblazoned message of Satanism. Amen. And, you know, another performer that had followed after that Beyonce performance the very next year was Bruno Mars. And Bruno Mars was given glowing reviews by the likes of Bart Millard of Mercy Me, Christian artist, guys, Chris Tomlin. And they said this performance was awesome. It was amazing. And a lot of people were actually a little disheveled that a Christian would say that with 
what was going on there. Yeah, a lot of Christians were still have a, have a pulse of the conscience and were upset. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things that, that took place there was we would say, uh, why on earth would Bruno Mars team up with the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Because they seem very different. So why do you think that they, they would team up together to perform at the halftime show? Yeah, I can't say all the motives for teaming up, but it's kind of interesting. It's birds of a feather. So uh, Anthony Kiedis, we, sh- we show the leader of Red Hot Chili Paper Peppers. Uh, before I did, they sold their souls for rock and roll. One of the things I uh, decided to include uh, was the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I mean, they spell their, their name, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, right? Their, their Sex Magic album is uh, spelled with a K. And that's how Crowley spelled magic because K was his magic 11th uh, letter of the alphabet, was his magical number. Uh, and he put that at the end of magic, and they spell it with a K. And by the way, Crowley pushed what he called was what he called sex magic, and uh, that was, his sex magic was to commune with demonic entities and get them to do your bidding through practicing satanic rituals uh, through sex. Uh, in fact, uh, Aerosmith, Steven Tyler, the lead singer of one of the biggest American bands ever, a band that we haven't yet exposed, but they'll be in our updated "They Sold Their Souls" expose, a Lord willing. Uh, we, we, because it came out much later after I exposed that, uh, he, he literally talks about how he became big and his band became big, Aerosmith, after he practiced sex magic and during the climax of a sexual relationship with a woman, cried out, you know, uh, in the midst of practicing sex magic. And he says, the rest is history. We became huge. So sex magic is part of the Red Hot Chili Peppers deal. And when they're in the MTV Music Awards, uh, they're receiving their, an award. And Anthony Cadis simply just says straight out, he says, First of all, I want to give thanks to Satan, you know, and it's just crazy. I mean, the lead, the lead guitarist, I think he's passed on now, uh, admitted that he'll get on his knees and ask the spirits to possess him. Same deal. I mean, this is, it, it, you can't deny it if you want to be real. Yeah, and, and you know what? Like, like we said in the very beginning, Bruno Mars, who a lot of people thought were squeaky clean, you obviously exposed the fact that a lot of his lyrics were obviously... Salacious, yeah. Yeah, just absolutely disgusting. Uh, he was also caught with a ton of (laughs) cocaine on his person. And so we had already talked about that a lot of this bubblegum stuff was only so much bubblegum, that there was really some evil things, denigrating marriage, songs that were performed right there at the halftime show. But to think of somebody like Bruno Mars connecting with Red Hot Chili Peppers, it's very interesting. And you can hear from his own words how high they were up on his list. When we got the phone call, they were like, hey, we love, you know, on these things, we love to raise the stakes and, uh, and, and, and have, you know, you can have another artist there with you. Would you like to do something like that? And the first band I thought of was the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Sadly, like so many artists who are leading the masses away from God and to hell, the Red Hot Chili Peppers pay homage to Satan and are being used by the satanic powers of darkness. Here we see the Chili Peppers lead singer, Anthony Kiedis, giving thanks to Satan at an MTV awards ceremony. First of all, I'd like to thank Satan. I'd like to thank Satan. Thank Satan. Incredibly, at their Super Bowl performance, the Chili Peppers performed their perverted song, Give It Away. The song first appeared on their perverse album album, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, for which the music was largely crafted by the Chili Peppers' former guitarist and occultist, John Frusciante. Satanism and demonic possession is common in the entertainment world as Satan seeks to use artists as puppets to adversely influence the blind masses to do things like destructive drugs and engage in sexual perversion. Chili Peppers former guitarist John Frusciante, who is listed by Rolling Stone magazine as one of the top 100 guitarists of all time, knows that much of the Chili Peppers' huge success is owing to the spirit world, which uses him as a medium or a channel. Frusciante admitted, quote, There were beings of higher intelligence controlling what I was doing, and I don't know how to talk about it or explain it. It was very clear to me that the music was coming from somewhere other than me, end quote. Frusciante further admits, quote, I was having verbal communication with the spirits while I was recording. He goes on to say a little later, the spirits give you ideas for things, and what's important to them is what's important to me, end quote. Frusciante speaks of, quote, the voices in my head were telling me that I had more work to do, end quote. Chili Peppers lead singer Anthony Kiedis, who we just saw giving thanks to Satan, admitted that he takes pleasure in watching Frusciante's, quote, passion for playing and for his desire to commune with the spirits both the invisible and the people who were there, end quote. It should be obvious to anybody who is open to truth just what kind of spirits Fushanti is open to. He claims that songs like Emptiness, 
I'm Around, and 666 were all inspired by Satanist Aleister Crowley. Crowley, who ate human poop and had sex with children, blatantly admitted in his confessions to being a Satanist, even admitting, quote, I simply went over to Satan's side, and adding later, I wanted to be his chief of staff, end quote. Crowley developed a type of ritualistic magic that included communion with demonic entities and even the perversion of pedophilia called sex magic. You know, one of the interesting things that you're quoting him, Crowley, because you have a lot of these people say, oh, Crowley wasn't really a Satanist, so, so forth. But then you have him quoting in Confessions, an autobiography, sure. correct? Literally saying, I simply went over to Satan's side, and to this hour, I cannot tell why, right? When he yeah, wrote that. I think I marshal over a dozen different quotes from Crowley's works. Uh, he was obviously a Satanist, and, but because it's just so obvious, but it's yeah. only, you know, Satanists that often will try to deny he's a Satanist, you yeah. know? So. No, I think that's, that's something that's really important to point out, especially when you're talking about somebody who's had so much influence. You went through the Beatles. He's on the front cover of Sar Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Cup Band. You went through the Doors, you know, one of the, one of the biggest rock bands ever from America, right? And they have a bust of a Lester Crowley with them. Sure. You know, over and over again, you see these influences in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, when you see the magic spelled with a K, you know, all of these Sting, things. you know, David Bowie, the Rolling Stones, you know, Led Zeppelin, you know, I mean, going to their whole connection to Crowley, which is bigger than just about any bands, you know, Iron Maiden up into the current times, you know? And I think one of the important things is, as, as we're going along explaining this, is to see once again, as Joe has already mentioned specifically, that it's the prince of the power of the air, that there's a spirit behind all this. Why is Jay-Z connected to this weirdo old pedophile, right? Why are all these people connected? It's because Satan is the one ultimately using them. Why else would he ablazon that on his chest, right? All of these things, and I can tell you from somebody who was an atheist before I saw these evidences in They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll, I can tell you that it was the, the idea for me that it wasn't just simply one band. I was really into Slipknot at the time, right? It wasn't just simply because Devil Driver, a band that I would go to, would have a song called Do It Thou Wilt. And all these different bands, it was the fact that there was a synergy behind it all. Yeah. And now we're seeing it in the pop stars, right? And specifically, when we get into our next performer, Katy Perry. You yeah. know, and when her halftime performance took place, I think most of the talk was thrown towards the offbeat shark, right? Because she was somewhat vanilla outside of singing about kissing other girls and so to speak. But she herself has aligned herself with some pretty radical people. And she herself is a problem in and of herself. Yeah, I mean, she grew up in a, a quote unquote Christian household. I'm not sure how good and strong their doctrine was and what have you. But uh, she wanted fame, and she wanted fame through the Christian avenue of contemporary Christian music, and she didn't really make it. Uh, and we'll show it in a clip in a little bit what, you know, she basically acknowledges what she did to get power and fame, which is what these guys do. Uh, but uh, she, she basically gave herself up to, over to demonic forces. In fact, she, in, uh, when, when she received her Grammy Award, she basically did uh, what was described as like a Sabbath a witch's Sabbath. It was like a, uh, you know, what's depicted often as a witch's Sabbath or a midnight satanic mass. And uh, she, in fact, E! Online, I got a quote here. Um, Did we just witness an actual witchcraft during Katy Perry's Grammy performance? Quote, unquote. Uh, and then Katy Perry said that she talked to or she was inspired by, uh, and she talked to her as well, uh, Fleetwood Max, Stevie Nicks, uh, before her performance. And, and that's kind of interesting because Guess what? Stevie Nicks was called the blonde priestess of the occult by the Rolling Stone, and she dressed up in her witchy costume. She had music that was on almost every album, said produced by Welsh's witch music, crystal ball on the cover of most of her albums as, a, as an image and so forth. Talked about being moved around like a pawn on stage and not really understanding it, you know, kind of like the guitarist there from Chili Peppers. They're, they're in touch with these demonic forces. It's so clear. You're not going to hear about this stuff on 60 Minutes and all the evidences that, you know, in 2020 or whatever, that the popular news shows today, uh, they're not going to expose it because oftentimes they're part of it yeah. uh, because it's part of that world system we're talking about and there's all these forces at work. We have to put our hope in Christ, recognize that we've been called out of darkness into light, that we're supposed to be separate from the evils of this world and 
to serve Christ and bring other people out of darkness through the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, triumph over evil, and he'll have victory. And he already has the victory through the cross, uh, but it's a matter of him mopping up at Armageddon. But in the meantime, we're supposed to reach as many people for Christ as possible. But it's critical that we understand these things because hundreds of millions of professing Christians are knee-deep in this junk and being submerged in the powers of darkness and don't even recognize it. And there's a lot of souls on the line, so we need to help extricate believers from being caught up and moving and grooving to the beat down, back down that broad, broad path to destruction. Yeah, amen. And I think when we look at this, and you guys are going to hear right now, because it's nice to have us talking about it and show you the quotes, but I think there is a, a it's very powerful to hear them say it with their own words, yeah. and also you can hear her say it with her own lyrics. Pride's come down. Katy Perry was brought up praising God and singing in church, even releasing a gospel album under her father's last name as Katie Hudson. However, Katie tells us that as a 15-year-old, she wanted to be the next big Christian pop artist like Amy Grant. But her rise to stardom never really got off the ground. It is at this time that Katie turned her back on her professed faith in God and swears that she sold her soul to the devil in her quest to become a world famous pop star. I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so I kind of sang about you know what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Sold my soul to the devil. Katie's admission to selling her soul is further substantiated in her song Rock God. Perry not only wrote the song Rock God, which is also sung by Selena Gomez, but the song appears to be biographical of her betrayal of her creator and her selling her soul to the god of rock and roll, who she has already identified as the devil. Perry sings about rejecting the preacher's call to walk the straight and narrow path that Jesus Christ said leads to eternal life and selling her soul to the rock god who possesses her with his music. So what in the world is Katie singing about? I sold my soul to the devil. Whether in conversation or in lyric, we see it probably isn't so much in jest there. When in our Super Bowl clip on Katy Perry, we show how she's just, uh, instead of using the Western stylized witchcraft that she did at the Grammys, she appeals more to the East and in, in, in the, in the Middle East and, you know, and so forth. And, uh, the witchcraft that she implores, or she uses, I should say, is more of a, it's still witch, it's witchcraft again. She uses all the Crowleyan type imagery or that's popular today, the, or I should say the, uh, the god Horus again. In fact, she actually crawls up in this depiction of Horus into his arms, you know, and the snake, there's a snake that goes behind and so forth. And, and it's based, you know, kind of like uh, Madonna's deal again, but she's totally pushing the whole, you know, Eastern mystical mindset. But of course, I mean, if she just constantly inundated people, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, she'd turn people off like that. But she'll, they'll drop some hints here and there, you know, uh, for other Satanists and so forth. And, but typically what they'll do is they'll push occultism in the form of uh, a dumbed down form of Satanism, which, but the, you know, the Bible is very clear. There's no difference. The scriptures say that Satan comes as an angel of light. It's no, it's no wonder then it says that his ministers transform themselves in the ministers of righteousness. So you got to test everything by the Word of God, what's being proclaimed. And even Anton LaVey, the head of the Church of Satan, said that there's no difference. You know, he mocked white witches. He said, there's no difference in white magic and black magic. You're tapping into the same forces we're tapping into. And that's actually, that's one of the few biblical things that guy had said. Uh, <laughs> they're all the same satanic forces. You know, one of the things that when I see this, you know, you see Katy Perry, you see her as this, you know, bubblegum, you know, princess, but she made it on the scene literally espousing, practicing lesbianism. I mean, that's the song that got her out there. I kissed a girl and I liked it, right? Mm -hmm. That was her song that made it huge. And she sang that with Lenny Kravitz playing guitar at the Super Bowl halftime performance. And this is, 
Guys, this is no accident. And, and as you mentioned that, yeah, she doesn't want to invoke and show everyone because they're, you know, you, you win people over more with honey, right? And so she's going to win them over and then open them up to these realms, to yeah. these, these realms of darkness. And I always found it interesting. There was a band uh, named The uh, Ghost, and they were from Sweden, an ultra satanic band. But when they interviewed the singer, he actually specifically mentioned how the Beatles were doing a lot of the same things that they were doing as well, and of the same spirit. And I always found that really interesting because when you look at it, that's ultimately the truth. Just as Ice Cube, when, when NWA was accepted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he said that rock and roll is a spirit. Yeah. And they were part of that same spirit. And that's what we're talking about here. Yeah, you don't have to get people to worship the devil directly uh, to damn their souls. All you have to do is keep them blinded to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and surrendering their, themselves to Christ. All you have to do is get them, you can get them to worship, you know, some kind of uh, a stump as their God, as their idol or whatever. Just anything you, these demons can do to keep people from worshiping Christ. But if he can get them to open themselves up by, by doing occult practices, then he gains more power through them to influence the rest of the world. So that's why the laugh and push witchcraft. Yeah, amen. And the next artist that we're going to talk about, and we, we covered them, and sadly enough, YouTube actually did take down our video all across the globe on this, but we do have, do have it available on Vimeo. And it had to do with Coldplay, who also performed alongside Beyonce and Bruno Mars. And much of the reason that they performed next to them is a lot of people were asking, why on earth is Coldplay playing at the halftime show? They're not that big anymore. What's going on? But Coldplay had recently done a video specifically with Beyonce for a song called Him of the Weekend. And so we are going to play a clip right here showing you just what the Him of the Weekend was. Why at Super Bowl 50's colorful performance with Coldplay, Beyonce, and Bruno Mars does Coldplay plaster their equipment with Hindi writing everywhere? Is there a deeper connection to Coldplay and Beyonce's promotion of Eastern mysticism and the occult? Are the incredibly popular pop artists Beyonce and Coldplay being used as tools to further an agenda to turn the masses away from their creator to false demon gods? Coldplay and Beyonce's performance on the greatest stage on earth at their 2016 Super Bowl appearance drew potentially millions of new fans even though Hindus voiced offense by their appropriation and exploitation of their religion in their song and video, Hymn for the Weekend, shot in Mumbai, India. A video that was perceived as religious and cultural appropriation for the purpose of monetary profit. However, there is something far more sinister than cultural and religious exploitation for profit in Him for the Weekend, and it is mass occult conditioning. Many have noted that the video features spiritual hand gestures, like the hand sign where three overlapping sixes are used to symbolize occult energy, which is also reminiscent of the Tumo symbol, which also often appears as three sixes and is used on Buddhist and Shinto temples throughout the Far East. The video Hymn for the Weekend features Beyonce dressed up like a Hindu bride or goddess and employs the exaltation of Hindu gods and is rife with Hindu religious symbolism. Many are unaware that the Hymn for the Weekend song and video is a celebration of the religious festival of Holi, a spring festival also called Festival of Colors. It is also important to note that the title Hymn, H-Y-M-N, for the weekend refers to a song of worship. However, when you look at the song, it's not about the worship of the one true God, our Creator, but it's about the worship of demon gods and Satan himself. Yeah, I see, you know, when you look at that clip and you see them pushing this Hinduism, and, and I think that's, you know, one of the sick things is you see it, them using the word Hymn, as you mentioned in that clip, something that we would sing, you know, to glorify God, and then you look at them, and it reminds me so much of, you know, with George Harrison and mm -hmm. his song, yeah. you know, where he came in. My and, Sweet Lord, yeah. My Sweet Lord, and who's his sweet Lord in that song? Yeah, first he <laughs> sings Hallelujah, and that was one of the most, you know, listened to songs for over a decade on AM radio, actually longer than a decade, and Hallelujah, then he switches it to Hare Krishna, we exposed that and they sold their souls for rock and roll. And he literally says, we quote him saying he was sneaking up on Christians a bit, getting them comfortable by singing hallelujah. And then as they get their foot uh, tapping, he says, and he has them in a place of, of security where they think they're okay. Then he says, I drop in Hare Krishna. And before you know it, they'll be singing to Hare Krishna before they know what's happening. I mean, that's what he said, you know? And he, it's, it's demonic. These guys know what they're doing. They're using 
subterfuge. They're, 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 t- they're targeting, it's really the demonic spirits using them, uh, Christians, to get them to worship false gods. And we're not even called to, we're called, warned to even not even use the name of false gods in like a cavalier way. Obviously, we're called to expose false gods. And you read the prophets who, uh, even those who say that don't mention false gods, will use their names in the context of expose. But we're supposed to be, not be cavalier about their names because the Bible says the gods of the nations are demons. And we showed some of the Hindu gods, like Kali, you know, the, 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 the skulls of the husband she's destroyed, a goddess of, you know, destruction. Uh, Shiva's a god of destruction as well. Uh, and basically we read that, you know, Hare Krishna, I show from the Bhagavad Gita, one the, the, the so-called, you know, Hindu holy book, where he identifies himself as the prince of demons, uh, the god of destruction, the serpent of eternity. Who's that? You know, that's yeah. Satan. You know, so... Uh, we have to be careful, and as I mentioned earlier, Satan doesn't have to get you to worship him directly. He just has to get you to turn away from the living God and turn to idols, because the Paul says very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that behind these idols are demonic entities. Amen. And as we move down this train, we have the next artist. And many have always warned, beware of the company you keep. Now, Lady Gaga has not only kept some wicked company, but has performed wickedly in her own right. And in fact, in this clip that you're going to see, you're going to see her talking about her good friend, Marina Abramovich. And watch Joe expose just how wicked this woman truly is. The satanic ritual, which Podesta was expected to attend, as you shall see, if done according to Satanist Aleister Crowley's Book of the Law, which Abramovich appears to be largely following, involves child sacrifice. Most everyone missed the child sacrifice connection with spirit cooking. We know that Abramovich was using much of Crowley's spirit cooking recipe for devil worshippers because she documented this for us in a video where you can see her writing down many of the ingredients for spirit cooking. Gaga has spent much time praising the satanic spirit cooker Abramovich, even claiming her influence on her life. Marina, I think you are so wonderful, so beautiful and inspiring and and as a woman I am wants to translate what her work means into my own life on a on a domestic level I am obsessed with this woman she is so incredible the satanic spirit cooking ritual is better known as the cake of light ritual among Crowley and Satanists and is like a blasphemous satanic sacrament practiced by Crowley's OTO members that mocks Jesus' last supper of partaking of unleavened bread in remembrance of Jesus' love and death for the sins of the world to deliver them from hell. As you can see, she also uses Crowleyan symbols like the triangle and the number of the Antichrist 666 All of this is quite revealing as to what many of these people in the higher echelons of politics and the entertainment world are all about. We also see here that Abramovich appears to really love the number of the beast as her Twitter handle is AbramovichM666. The Cake of Light ritual was created by Crowley and conducted as part of Crowley's Gnostic Mass ritual where, quote, a small flat wafer, end quote, is used and made out of honey, oil, and bodily excrements like menstrual blood, breast milk, urine, and sperm. In chapter 20 of Crowley's book, Magic and Three in Practice, a footnote on the contents when discussing spirit cooking includes procuring the flesh blood of an animal. According to Crowley, quote, the subtle principle of animal life itself is fixed in them by the introduction of fresh living blood, end quote. In Abramovich's video, she claims that she used pig's blood Crowley and Satanists often take the Devil's Supper every day as the most important of Crowley's satanic sacraments to be fully possessed by the Devil. Crowley taught in his Magic, Book 4, quote, a Eucharist of some sort should most assuredly be consummated daily by every magician, and he should regard it as the main sustenance of his magical life. It is of more importance than any other magical ceremony because it is a complete circle, end quote. Abramovich's prospective spirit cooking dinner with Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, reveals she is no mere neophyte to Crowleyan Satanism as she writes on a wall in blood the Crowleyan recipe for the ritual, mix fresh breast milk with fresh sperm, fresh morning urine sprinkle over nightmare dreams. With a sharp knife cut deeply into your middle finger, eat the pain, end quote. According to Crowley's satanic cult, a batch of the sacrificial meal could make up to 50 or more cakes. Abramovich appears to make something similar to the cake of light. 
Here she is seen with her friend and fellow occult practitioner, popular actor James Franco, who she instructs to close his eyes as he eats a special cake covered with gold. Eat it slowly and just really feel the texture and the taste. In her video that she herself calls spirit cooking, we see a few seconds where she cuts to a clip of her wrapped up by a serpent. As we shall see, this imagery reveals the main purpose of spirit cooking. Lady Gaga, Abramovich, John Podesta, and James Franco seems like birds of a satanic feather flock together. Birds of a satanic feather indeed, but uh, one of the things that you brought out there, we've talked about Marina Abramovich and her connections, even with Jay-Z and other yeah. artists as well, Microsoft doing some pretty radical things. Recently, with her. yeah, relatively just, recently. Just yeah. recently, yeah, but... What about this Lady Gaga character who was up there, you know, at the Super Bowl halftime performance? Yeah, uh, real quickly, because we had a little bit bigger video, is that the email actually from WikiLeaks that came forth was Abramovich writing to uh, Tony Podesta, John's brother, inviting him, saying, hey, are you coming over to this spirit cooking dinner tonight? And are you bringing your brother John? You know, so it wasn't as though she explained what it was. It was as though they would normally go, or he knew what it was. It's pretty obvious, if, you know, if I said, hey, you can come to the spirit cooking, you'd be like, what? You know, the average person, you know now. Yeah. But obviously, so it's, at least, and he was, uh, John Podesta was the campaign manager at the time for Hillary Clinton's uh, presidency, and a big wig in her, her you know, her deal. But uh, she, you know, Lady Gaga is, there's so many things to say about her, but we'll just briefly say a couple things, because uh, she's talked about having these wild demonic dreams where, her family's being tortured, tortured, but she has to give in to Satan's power uh, to, to actually uh, set them free, you know, which was kind of interesting because you heard my testimony, which I've given years and years long before Lady Gaga was in the scene, about my mother screaming, my sister screaming, my father dying, my brother crying. First, I was troubled at the devil for the reason, but then the choice, that be my soul, then my family's to be treasoned. Couldn't win to be a devil or a demon. I thought it's kind of interesting why I saw her saying that. And, of course, I chose Jesus, uh, and Deepak Chopra has told her she needs to embrace the darkness within her. And, I mean... They talk about embracing the darkness. She has a song called Judas, and she sings over and over again, I love, I love, I'm in love with Judas. And she sings, sings so, uh, lyrics in this, in the most biblical sense, I am beyond repentance. And she knows what's going on. And she sings, and Judas is the demon I cling to. I cling to. Uh, so she's not clinging to the old demon. He went to his, or Judas went to his own place, but these demonic forces again, him being a symbol of darkness. And she's just perpetuated this whole a lot of the Eastern mysticism, the Eye in the Triangle that Crowley pushed, the Age of Horus, all that stuff. Goat, where's the goat's head? We expose a lot of that in, uh, when I do live presentations. Yeah, and you know, at the end of that film, you were seeing just a glimpse, and I hope you check out the, the entire edition because there's way more to get into. And in that, one of the things that, that takes place is you're seeing just that last image, Mr. James Franco, not only taking that wicked wafer, but also you see him there with Kenneth Anger. And you see we the have- The co-founder of Church of Satan. Yeah, it was a film like Lucifer Rising, which many of, speaking of Lady Gaga, many of the fans of Kenneth Anger were upset because it looked like that Lady Gaga, for one of her videos, actually stole the intro. And parts yeah, from of his video, the, from his little movie, The Pleasure Dome, uh, she's actually, he actually shows a woman that's you know digesting or eating a rosary. And then she lifts that from, she lifts a number of things from Kenneth yeah. Anger, by the way. And she lifts that from his and incorporates that same imagery where she's eating a rosary slowly. And it's the same way. It's, it's obviously she lifted it. And yeah, she's definitely been influenced and is influenced and is coots with other Satanists. Yeah, and James Franco specifically has been, we, we expose it in our video covering Adam Levine in his own halftime yeah. performance because James Franco himself did music videos alongside having Kenneth Anger do act as almost like what would be the pastor in a normal wedding, yeah. conducting the wedding. He officiates the wedding, that's right. But he officiates a wicked, satanic wedding. I mean, they're literally covered in blood. It's like an orgy, you know? Uh, and I, I mean, literally, there's some stuff you couldn't even show. Oh, yeah. It's wicked. I mean, it's just, they're all creepy music. And, and uh, yeah, that's uh, Franco. People are exposed. I mean, I should expose that to some people that I know were like, James Franco, I'm like, yeah, yeah. he's into, he, he's friends with Kenneth Anger, and he practices different elements of Satanism. Yeah, without a doubt. And you see all these, as he mentioned, the feathers flocking together. I mean, that's what we're seeing here 
over and over again. And you see the spirit of the power of the air behind these sons of disobedience. And when you see and, and, and see James Franco, who, you know, Pineapple Express, stoner comedies, or Spider-Man, and so forth, and then you see him doing these demonic activities, you're wondering what is behind him in doing all those things. Oh, yeah. And then in that, very, in that video with Adam Levine, I believe you exposed something that a lot of people had no idea because most people know Adam Levine as the judge on The Voice, the lead singer of Maroon 5, singing bubblegum, you know, love songs and, and so forth. And a lot of people were taken aback during his, even his Super Bowl performance. They're like, why is this guy taking his shirt off? This doesn't even make sense for the songs. But I think it kind of gives a little bit of a, an interlude in terms of helping us show this guy actually is much more sinister than I think a lot of people understand. Yeah, in uh, that particular expose we do when we show uh, when we show him uh, in the particular song that you're talking about, he basically there's all this imagery where he's basically a creepy stalker, and he's stalking a woman, and without her obviously knowing about it, and he's hiding. And he's depicted as a butcher, and he's obsessed with her. He's following her home. He's looking through her window, checking her out. And then it shows him over her bed when she's sleeping. And so many of his own fans, tons of his own fans were like, this, I can't believe he's doing this. This is wicked. This is creepy, that kind of stuff. And, but there was a lot going on there that people didn't know. I mean, in the video, it shows him swinging on a piece of, you know, meat in the, in the meat locker. Uh, big old side of you know side of a cow and singing about her, you know stalking her and he even talks about it. I mean the lyrics you might even want to read some of the lyrics are really wicked because if you hear the song it's supposed to be you know a lot of people think it's a love song he's talking about stalking a woman but what a lot of people don't get and I'd studied serial killers years ago and uh, what's interesting is he's a butcher and there was a butcher I should say there was a in Alaska a famous serial killer. Not as famous as Jeffrey Dahmer, Richard Ramirez, or Charles Manson, but uh, Robert Hansen in Alaska, who would basically catch women, let them go, and chase them and kill them. And he would put body parts in a storage refrigerator, so he's got the nickname The Butcher. But what's fascinating about this, and sick at the same time, is it went over, I think, everybody's heads for the most part, uh, because you don't see people even commenting on it, uh, is... Robert Hansen would slick his hair back and have these thick frame glass glasses that were very distinct. And that's the look he goes for in this video. And he's glorifying this whole thing. These people are wicked, folks. Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you haven't seen that, you guys got to check that out. I think that it is made very, very clear what he's drawing from. And it's a wicked video, hard to even watch. And worse yet, he's doing that to his wife in the video. It's very... Really, really just gross and, and, and demonic is what it is. blood over each, on each other and everything. It's wicked. Yes. And then what we had after that, sh that those shenanigans, we had Shakira and J-Lo. And in that specific performance, sadly enough, we had over and over again on the internet in the secular realm that this was... This was a beautiful thing to see women empowerment running the show, Latin women running the show... But you can look, you can see little children watching that performance yeah. while these two ladies perform erotica on a stripper pole. Yeah. I mean, in the middle of this family-friendly, right? That's what it's supposed to be. Family-friendly Pepsi halftime show. Next thing you know, we have these two ladies getting raunchy on a stripper pole in front of a bunch of kids. Yeah, and, and you know, that's, and that's just like Satan to say, this is woman empowerment, you know? reducing you to being, you know, just a sleaze monster and to the, the lowest comedy denominator, uh, just lascivious perversion and promoting this as women empowerment to who knows how many tens of thousands of young ladies and little girls, uh, perhaps hundreds of thousands because we're talking about Super Bowl here. And that, that is just, you know, as a, as a, a dad of, I've got a, you know, besides a couple of gals who are, uh, and you're married to one of them, uh, <laughs> And having granddaughters, it just breaks your heart because this is the imagery that Satan puts out there. This is what you want to aspire to be. Basically, a toy for men. A toy for men in yeah. general to where you're just their toy that gets, you know, bounced back and forth and so forth. It's disgusting. And, and you know, it's sad because uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, uh, those who cause these little ones to stumble, 
And a lot of these artists uh, like J-Lo and others are leading them into destruction. Uh, it's better that a large millstone be hung around their necks and they be thrown in the sea than the faith that they're going to suffer. Uh, because the Lord says in that same chapter that he doesn't will any, that any of these little ones perish. So it breaks God's heart that there are these forces that he allows them because we have to make a choice between good and evil, Christ or Satan, light or darkness. But he allows them certainly this to take place because he's separating the sheep and the goat. He's separating the righteous from the unrighteous. But we need to make the right choices. But we also need to guard our children from the temptations and the imagery that Satan will seek to use to bring them again down that broad road of destruction away from Christ. Yeah, and in the book of Proverbs it says, like gold in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman that shows no discretion. And what that basically means is that while gold is precious and it's and it's valuable, it's like shoving it in a pig's snout. It's a waste. Yeah, the Proverbs and, also say, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she is to be praised. Amen. That's exactly the opposite. And as we got, we get into it, that was last year's performance. And now as we get into Abel Tesfe, better known as The Weeknd, we're going to be talking a little bit about him because I think his lyrics, his content, some of his videos also play a, play a bigger role in simply the vanilla performance, so to speak. Not that it was all that vanilla, but uh, that there wasn't much to be talked about uh, concerning his performance in the worldly scene. A lot of people saw that and said, yeah, that was pretty boring, and he probably should have had another artist to come with him. But nonetheless, his music and one of the songs he performs, he actually has music bragging about some of the music he did. And in fact, one song he sings this. I just won a new award for a kid's show, talking about a face numbing off a bag of blow. And this okay, is a guy yeah. bragging about the fact that in 2015, he was nominated for a, teen, a, a Nickelodeon Teen Choice Award for his song, Can't Feel My Face, which he performed at the halftime show. Yeah, he sings about not feeling his face because he's coked up. Then he has a song, I Can't Feel My Face, and uh, this is what's put, being pushed on Nickelodeon. Uh, and by the way, the song, I Can't Feel My Face, the video for that, uh, there's a series of his videos, which, you know, many, you know, secular people that don't know Christ look at, hey, this looks like he's saying he sold his soul. But the song, I Can't Feel My Face, is quite interesting because the video for that, uh, he's performing at some kind of nightclub and everybody's indifferent. So those people just, you know, they're not really attracted to his music. Uh, they're indifferent. One guy's like yawning and so forth. And then, you know, this... This guy who looks like he's supposed to depict death. He's got the an older guy with his cheeks are all sunken in. He's wearing black. He lights his lighter and throws it to him, throws it on him, and boom. So it's like, you know, many believe it to be a representation of Satan. It definitely looks like he's supposed to represent death. And but he's the catalyst who throws this lighter on him on stage. He hits him and pff, he catches fire. And as soon as he catches fire, he starts spinning and he becomes electrifying, and the fans are in awe as they are many of his fans are now so uh, he goes through this transformative deal when this figure of darkness representing death gives him power and electrifies him and it's quite interesting because uh when you you look at what's going on there uh you see that he is not only in, it's kind of like the robert johnson deal you know, we show in our video, they sold their souls to rock and roll. We go way back to the 30s and so forth with Robert Johnson. And we show where, the, we show people from interviews even. And that, yeah, he was nothing, old bluesman. Yeah, no, I mean, top bluesman that say, he couldn't play at all. He leaves. And they talk about how he said he went down to the crossroads and made a deal with the devil. We show his song where he sings about making a deal with the devil. But it's interesting that you have this theme throughout rock music. And by the way, Robert Johnson is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and talks about how you know, he had sold his soul at the crossroads. And you have this happening today, uh, whether he's depicting that or not, because I can't be absolutely sure that this is what he means there. And I'm very, very careful to document things. But at the same time, there's imagery is meant to say things. So you need to, it's good to look at it, especially if it coincides with something that's quite, more, quite a bit more blatant, which in his song, uh, Reminder, uh, it's quite interesting because when he's singing on stage during that song, it's very clear that, I mean, emblazoned in the background, boom, Satan, just glorifying Satan. Yeah. Disappears, it's almost subliminal. You're able to catch it. Hopefully Tony will be able to put that up there for you guys. And then boom, you'll see it again, Satan. 
Okay, he's not saying give praise to Jesus, let's all follow the Lord and get saved because we're, we're sinners, we need to repent and get right with the Lord. He's glorifying Satan. Yeah, and that was a concert back in 2017 in Copenhagen, Denmark, that uh, as Tony edited that video for you guys, you guys will see it clearly coming up in the background. And what was so interesting is, be, is I found that specific Satan, you know, him pulling that up on the screen, I found that through someone exposing the fact as a, you know, a fake news kind of thing, saying, no, he didn't do that at the Super Bowl. He did that in 2017. Yeah. The fact is, is that he did that. And the fact is, is when we look at his album, and specifically, I, I believe this last album, After Hours, his, his newest album, he is miserable about where he's gone from. At 20 years old, I believe, he was homeless in Toronto before being discovered. And this is actually a common thing for a lot of people, homeless yeah. or destitute. Jim Morrison so forth. was homeless when he made it big. And he said he met the spirit of Satan on the Venice Canal, sleeping outside. I mean, long story, but same deal. Same deal. Over and over again, you see this, these des desperation, you know, and Satan dangles this carrot for them. And what's interesting is he has multiple lyrics in multiple albums where he says, Cali is the mission. You know, Cali is the mission. And California is really, has really become, as, as a whole, Hollywood and so forth, yeah. has really become somewhat of a mirage. I mean, over yeah. and over again. And that's a lot of what he has said. And I want to read some of his lyrics so you can see where it's brought him over and over again. There was, a, there was one lyric where he says, I used to pray when I was 16. If I didn't make it, then I'd probably make my wrist bleed. This guy's talking about not making it big or I'll kill myself. And how many people have done that, by the way? Yeah. How many people have ended their own lives? You go to Hollywood make it big? now. A lot of people walking around were people that came from other states, aspiring to be actors or musicians and yeah. famous. And one lyric he says in uh, "Too Late," he says, "It's way too late to save our souls, babe. Yeah, it's way too late. We're on our own." Yep, he's admitting he's a lost soul. And sadly, it's it's not too late. He needs to know that. He can yeah. turn and repent and put his trust in Jesus. But the problem is, is the thing that he's saying right here, he, in Too Late as well, he starts the song off with, we're in hell and it's disguised as paradise. And that's the truth. That's where he is. It's disguised as paradise. And in his song, Escape from L.A., he says, this place is never what it seems. Take me out of L.A., take me out of LA. And the fact is, is that the weekend over and over again, and I think if you read this and you see it, you'll see that what he, his mission to get to Cali, to be this big, this big star, all it's led him to is heartbreak. He can brag about his drug use, but you see the heart of it come out. And that's the, that's the truth. This is a man who has now been given everything, right? Saying on the biggest stages, yep. dated Selena Gomez and Bella Hadid and all these great actresses and uh, artists and models and so forth. And yet he's found ultimately how empty all of that is. And he's not the only one. Plenty of stars, guys like Shia LaBeouf saying he has a God-sized hole inside of him. Other stars over and over again. Why, why when you go to uh, Westlake, right, which is an expensive area over here, you see the pharmacy with the door going out the back. Because why? Why the reason? The reason is, is because people are having to pop pills in order to keep themselves not so sad, right? Antidepressants and so forth, because they've accomplished what every America told them is the dream, and yet they are still unsatisfied. They have chased this vapor over and over again. And The weekend's not the only halftime performer or Super Bowl performer, I should say, that has found this to be true after receiving all the glitz and all the glamour, after receiving all of the championships. You can hear from the own the, his own lips from the seven-time Super Bowl champion himself, Tom Brady. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and, and still think there's something greater out there for me? I mean, maybe a lot of people would say, hey man, this is what it is. I reached my goal, my dream, my life is... Me, I thank God. It's got to be more than this. I mean, this isn't... This can't be what it's all cracked up to be. I mean, I've done it. I'm 27, and what else is there for me? What's the answer? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I mean, it's, I think that's part of me trying to go out and experience other things, but there's a, I know, I love playing football, and I love being the quarterback for this team, and, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of other parts about me that I'm trying to find, 
and different ways of expression, being around. I know what ultimately makes me happy are family and friends and positive relationships with, with great people. And I think I get more out of that than anything. You know, we want to conclude by encouraging you to not miss the big picture. You can be aware of all these things and say, wow, it's so clear, it's so obvious. But the real question is, do you know Jesus, you know? And our hope and our heart and our prayer has been, and we've prayed over and over again about this, is that you make sure you know the Lord, you know? Uh, there's people running around saying, this is going on, that's going on. But a lot of people miss the big picture. Tom Brady has sought the powers of darkness and remains empty. I don't care how many Super Bowls he wins, he's never going to have the joy of the Lord and the peace of God as long as he's running from the Lord God. And uh, it's like trying to hammer that, that square peg in that little circle in the old, you know, the old little game the kids would play. Uh, but adults continue to do that as they get older spiritually. Uh, the Bible says that you know, when you chase after the things of this world, it's like chasing the wind. You can't grab it. It's like going after bubbles, they pop. Because the same book, Ecclesiastes, says that God has put eternity in our hearts. We have this eternity-shaped hole, not just a little hole. We have this huge hole that only the eternal God could fill. So we want to encourage you to understand and know that only the one true God who made you, who made you for, to, to know him and to have him live in your heart can fill that, that, that void that we fill with all this junk. You know, we're always trying to find it, you know, the world. They're chasing it, whether it's money, whether it's Wall Street power and fame uh, in Hollywood, uh, whatever it is, whether it's money and power and fame altogether, which many of these guys have attained to, but they admit that they're still empty. I have uh, I've done uh, messages where I've quoted many of the biggest stars in the world, several of them, mentioning that they're just filled with loneliness and hopelessness and despair. And guess what? The crazy thing is, we don't have to pay for it. it salvation is a free gift. Is Jesus talked to a woman at a well, and uh, she came out there because she came out there in the heat of the day when people don't go out to the well, that's the wrong time to go because it's so hot. You got to carry your water so far. But she obviously was a woman of ill repute. And Jesus said to her, if you would have asked me, I would have given you water and you would never thirst again. And she said, give me that water. So I don't have to come out this well again. But he was missing the fact that he was using water as a metaphor for the power of the Holy Spirit, for God in her life. And he told her, he went on to tell her that uh, about her life, that she's been married five times. And the man she's living with right now is even her husband. He's basically letting her know, hey, you're living a wicked life and you don't have the water of life. You don't have salvation. And she wanted that. And then she believed on him and put her trust in him and received salvation. A few chapters later, that's in John 4 and John chapter 7, uh, Jesus said uh, the Holy Spirit, that he would give uh, the Holy Spirit to those who ask, those who turn to him, and that they would have the bubbling water of the Holy Spirit flow out of their out of their innermost beings, out from, uh, out, from their, out from their hearts, and they'd be able to experience eternal life. And it says he spoke of the Spirit that would be given. And that's the thing is, folks don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't have the Father living in them. We want to encourage you, uh, if you're seeking it, whether it's fame, whether it's power, you know, more notoriety, more money, uh, some more pleasure, a fix through a drug or what have you, you're going to be left empty. And the more you seek these things out, the more empty you're going to become. But if you recognize that you're pursuing darkness, these are all idols and we're warned not to seek the idols of these age. Idols are anything that you use to replace God. And you turn from the idols to the living God. You turn to Christ. You turn from darkness to light. Uh, you'll, you'll, first and foremost, the most important thing, even before the, the big issue, the bigger issue than whether you're satisfied or not, whether you have the peace of God, is whether you're right with God and whether you're forgiven. So you have to ask the question, have I been forgiven of my sins? And each and every one of us has sinned. Each and every one of us has blown it. That's why we're separated from God's love and His joy and His peace and His presence. Because the Bible says all have sinned and committed, uh, have, have not only committed sin, but they transgress against God's law. The Bible says transgression of the law is sin. We've broken God's moral law. You and I know in our consciences, deep down, we know that we've broken God's moral law. That's why we feel bad. That's why we have this thing called guilt, because we've broken God's law. It, whether you've taken something that didn't belong to you, whether you've uh, said a lie, uh, whether you've uh, committed sexual sin, whether you've put something before God, which everybody has, that's idolatry. Idolaters go to the lake of fire, Revelation 21. You're in huge trouble. All of us are. The whole world will stand condemned before God without Christ. But the good news is this. We're in double trouble. We're sinners because we've broken God's law and we have a fallen, wicked, sinful nature. 
But guess what? There's a double cure. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to die on the cross and pay for your sins. He went to the cross because God allowed him and sent him. He sent his only son because the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he goes on to say, Jesus said, that he didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him may be saved. So God became a man and the person of Jesus Christ took upon himself the judgment that you and I deserve, the wrath, the penalty that we deserve so we could be declared righteous and not be condemned because of our sin. That's why Jesus died, was buried and rose again so you could be forgiven of your sins. And we want to encourage you right now to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Recognize that he paid for your sins on the cross and if you embrace him and accept the forgiveness he offers you by paying your debt, you'll pass from death to life. If you reject him and you say, hey, I want to continue in darkness. I don't want Jesus. You'll continue to be empty. You'll continue not to have peace. You'll continue to be hopeless and you'll end up separated from God in the lake of fire forever and ever. Why would you want to do that? It's just all lies. It's all illusions out there. Embrace Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And I said it's a double cure because it's, not only a, it's a cure not only in that we're forgiven of our sins, but guess what? That powerlessness we have to uh, do what's right and go forward. We receive new power from the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ in us, the hope of glory, whereby we're empowered now and able to live a righteous life. And also the things that we couldn't even imagine ourselves are doing, doing before. Now we want to be around the Christians. Now we want to follow the Lord. Now we want to worship Him. Now we want to be with Him forever because you have new eyes and you now no longer see Him in, 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 in dull gray. You see in color the way God designed it. I encourage you now, embrace Jesus Christ. Recognize these are all lies and Satan's means of hurl, hurl, hurling the masses to the lake of fire. But God has spoken to you today. And if you're not a Christian, he wants you to know what it means to know Christ and be saved. If you are a Christian, he wants you to pray for folks that don't know Christ and pray that more people would be reached and actually be one of the mouths that he uses to affect righteousness by bringing forth the presentation of the gospel to the lost through sharing Jesus. We love you guys. Thanks for watching uh, this presentation on the uh, Satanic Super Bowls. And we encourage you to know Christ and make him known. We love you guys. Press on in Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us in our presentation of Satan Performs at the Super Bowl. If this video impacted you in any way, we encourage you not only to subscribe to our channel to see all the different videos that we described in this presentation, but also so you can share. Click that share button, share with your friends. We want them to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also go to goodfight.org and go to our resources page and check out the DVD that I watched and gave my life to Christ. They sold their souls for rock and roll. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us and check out all the other videos right here on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook that we mentioned in this video. God bless you.